Hi, this is Jeffy. So for those of you following along in my previous videos, I have this marvelous system from the Exact Corporation that has dual NVIDIA RTX GeForce 3090 GPUs in it. So two 3090 GPUs. This is a beast of a machine for machine learning. In this video, let's talk about two GPUs and what you can do with two GPUs, why you would want to get two GPUs, and just what your strategy for buying two of these might be. You might want to just buy them right out, just throw money at it, get as powerful a machine as you can. You may want to give yourself an upgrade path. So let's get into this. I'm going to talk about five questions that you may have as far as using dual GPUs on a system like this. First question, are two GPUs putting both of them into your computer, is that basically doing the same thing as having one big giant GPU? Or buying a weaker GPU initially, adding a second one to it, have you now created the equivalent of a larger GPU? Now I'll tell you, these GPUs that I'm using here are largely just as props. As far as taking two GPUs and combining them into one, yes and no, mostly no. Most of the software out of the box that you're going to see that deals with multiple GPUs does data parallelization. So you're going to take your one neural network that you've created and you're going to try to speed up training. That's the case, say, with StyleGen2 ADA, which I'm going to give you some examples of here. If you are trying to train, say, a 1024 by 1024 GAN, and you need eight gigabytes of GPU memory to do that, if you've got two six gigabyte GPUs and you try to combine them together, you're, not, you're still not going to be able to do it. Because what StyleGAN2 ADA, because it's using data parallelization, it is taking both of those two GPUs and divvying up the batches so the individual sort of training runs before the neural network actually gets updated and splitting them between the two GPUs. It's extremely efficient and it scales quite linearly in many cases. So let's look at this performance boost that you're going to get from 23090s. This is a train that I was doing for StyleGAN2 ADA. This is really just about as good as it gets. StyleGAN2, the, I've looked through the code of StyleGAN2. The NVIDIA engineers who wrote this are absolute wizards with CUDA and with other te techniques. They, they scale really, really very well, up to however many GPUs you can get on a machine. I've not seen StyleGAN2 scaled across like a Horovod, like across multiple machines. So let's look at some of the performance that you actually get running dual GPU, dual 3090. This, these numbers I collected just in the last day running this 3090 system. With one GPU, this is using StyleGAN2 ADA. You'll see for eight ticks, you can see that we got through 32 kilo images in both, and that's to be expected. But look at the time processing. The time took 20, about 25 minutes to get through that first tick, so close to 30 minutes and close to 15 minutes. It's really just about doubling it, not quite doubling it. You rarely get that complete 100% efficiency. And also looking at the GPU memory, the GPU memory, you'll notice, is just slightly higher when you have two GPUs. And that's not unusual. And that does often, depends on what you're doing, but that does often, that overhead, go up as you go up to four or eight GPUs. So that's certainly something to be aware of if you're using four or so lower memory GPUs. And again, you can see really why I like to have eight or more GPU memory on these cards. Because if you're doing 1K GANs, which, which is what NVIDIA did for training their faces GAN that you've seen so much in the media, you can see at eight gig, you're, you're just right there. You might have, and if you had two eight gigabyte cards, you, you may even run into an issue right here on that tick. 
Now, you can also do model parallelization. That's where you're taking your neural network and splitting it across two GPUs. So maybe the input region of it is on one GPU, the output region of it is on a second GPU. That is usually not the out-of-box operation for a lot of models. Some of them will work that way. If you're in a research mode where you're creating your own models and you can tune them and set it up so that it works best for the type of hardware that you have, and you have two GPUs and you need a gigantic neural network of some sort, you can definitely split the one model across these. Something like NVLink becomes very important because now the GPUs are, one starts it and the other continues it and getting that data across the GPUs on something like an NVLink that's not going across the system bus is going to be very helpful for you. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I have done mostly data parallelization with GPUs where I'm basically taking the two GPUs and they're just splitting up the batches as they go through training. If you're using AWS or Google Cloud, internally they use something called Horovod, which lets you automatically throw large, large, large numbers of data parallelization GPUs at it. So you can throw 60 GPUs at training. And obviously those are not all on the same computer. And the parallelization is just taking your batch and throwing it across. If you've got enough data, that will scale linearly. If you don't, throwing more GPUs at it, you can only spread the spread it though so thin. You can almost think of it if you have a term paper to write and it needs to be 2,000 words. Well, I guess the fastest would be to have 2,000 people each write a word. Obviously, there's some synchronization and you won't scale linearly. Maybe having two people work on it will be much faster. It's kind of the same thing. If you're writing a book, then you can divvy that up much faster or much more effect efficiently. Maybe you don't have enough money, you just don't want to spend a lot on the GPU, you're just getting into deep learning. Maybe you want to buy a GPU today and add on another one later as your needs increase. What I'm going to really suggest on that is try to maximize your memory. There's a lot of options here in terms of the amount of memory. Secondarily, I really would say to memory is the number of cores and then the actual speed of the memory. The speed of the memory can become quite important, but when you're just starting out, you really want something with at least eight gigabytes. 12 is really good. 12 is gonna give you pretty much everything you need, but eight, eight to 12. And then as you get into more advanced things, you'll want, you may want that full 24 or even the 48 of an NVIDIA A6000. And that's one of the questions sometimes is 3090 versus the A6000. If you really need the 48 gigabytes all in one GPU and you don't wanna be doing a lot of fancy coding to try to split two of these 3090s with NVLink to get just the 48 gigabytes that would have been on, on one, that's when those workstation class GPUs really, really shine on things like Rapids and Blazing SQL that really can make use of any amount of RAM that you throw at it. But maybe you want to buy a RTX 3060 Ti with the eight gigabytes of RAM. And later on, you may want, to, you may notice, okay, this is, this is working good, but it's just too slow. If you're in the situation where it's working good, but it's too slow, then you can certainly add on a second one of these later, and maybe prices have gone down. And GPUs, who knows, wishful thinking. So then you can add that second GPU, and that will effectively double your throughput. Now you will have to make some changes to code in both PyTorch and TensorFlow to actually make use of it. But if you're doing data parallelization, these changes are really not that bad. Now, this gets into the next question that I'm often asked. Do you have to buy two of the same GPU? And the answer is no, you don't, typically. Now, don't quote me on this because obviously I have not tried every combination of multi-GPU in a system, but generally my understanding 
is that so long as they're of the same family. So you can put two 30s series on the same machine. You can't put a 30 and a 20 on the same machine. I have actually tried that one and I was unsuccessful. Basically, they need the same driver because you can't put two different NVIDIA drivers on the same machine running different video cards. The other situation that I have not tried, I've seen some reports of it working, is if you wanted to mix, say, a 30 series and an A series, like an A6000, like is in that machine behind me. Cooling is certainly a challenge when you have two GPUs in your system or more GPUs in your system. This is one of the advantages of using an OEM such as Exact. I found their system to do quite well in terms of cooling. I observed very, very little throttling, as we'll look at here in just a moment. You do have a hotter GPU and a cooler GPU, and that's that's somewhat, somewhat normal. I've got this machine right now running full blast with two GPUs, two 3090s, training on GANs. So let's look at the temperature and the cooling. This is certainly one of the advantages of buying from a company like Exact. They have created a lot of these systems and they are able to design them in such a way so that cooling is maximized in their, in their cases. You can definitely see that there is a hot GPU and a cooler GPU. So if you look at the two that we have here, GPU zero, is at 96% with its fan. So this is the hot GPU. This is really doing everything that it can with its fan. The temperature is 86C, which is about as high as you typically want to take that. You'll also notice that the wattage is a little bit lower than the other. That's typically how these how these throttle. So it's it's likely seen a little bit of throttling there, but the, the performance is scaling to the point that pretty close, pretty close to linear on the on the GAN. This is the amount utilization, so 100%, 99% on the other. Cooler GPU is at 73 degrees Celsius and is at 339, so it's able to use a little bit more wattage. NVLink is another thing to consider on these GPUs. Most of what I work on, I'm doing data parallelization, so I have not seen a lot of, of gain necessarily from NV, NVLink. When I'm running this in the cloud, NVLink is always typically there. If you're doing this on a system like this with the dual 3090s, you're typically using an NVLink bridge, which now this is showing with two A100 GPUs, but with the two 3090s right next to each other, it connects. If you have a higher dense system with four, the NVLink is actually interconnecting four of them more directly and the others less directly. I honestly have not used NVLink to, to its fullest capabilities. I could see that being very valuable if you were creating say some sort of a monster monster neural network on a very high end, like a DGX system from NVIDIA or other system that has literally eight of these types of GPUs on it that you want all of the GPUs communicating very, very closely to have one neural network on it. If you're just doing data parallelization, Horovod kind of thing, you probably won't see as much gain there. And only the highest graphics cards can typically support this. Only the 3090 has NVLink currently, and the A6000 has it. I think the A5000 has it as well. But definitely check to see that your card has NVLink capabilities if you want to use NVLink. Thank you for watching this video and a huge thank you to Exact for loaning me this hardware to try out some of these things with high-end systems like the 3090. We're thinking about maybe doing a video where I will compare performance of the 3090 versus something else, likely within the GeForce line. What other GeForce 
GPU would you like to see go head to head against the 3090 as we kind of finish off this series of using this system that Exact has been so kind to let me make use of. Thank you for watching this video and please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss anything as we continue to look at this system and other more powerful technologies with deep learning, Keras, and PyTorch as well.